strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable, and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down, if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks, so fast, it's worth the wait. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Sean from Sean Malloy Fitness. Here's a little video to show you what we do here. The County College of Morris Foundation Annual Golf Classic is coming to Brook Lake Country Club in Florham Park on Monday, October 16th. Golfers will enjoy 18 holes of golf on one of New Jersey's premier courses between a barbecue lunch spread and a buffet dinner. Registration begins at 11 a.m., giving golfers access to the locker room, driving range, and lunch in the clubhouse before our 12.30 shotgun start. At 5 p.m., enjoy an open bar cocktail reception prior to our 6 p.m. dinner and awards program. Proceeds benefit CCM student-athletes. Register online at ccm.edu slash foundation slash golf. Blue Nail was superior in almost every aspect. We worked with contractors for almost everything in the firehouse, and Blue Nail really made us feel comfortable all the way through, from the contract to pre-planning to scheduling, getting the job done. We are thrilled that they were able to do the job for us. Sussex Meat Packing in Wharton, New Jersey is a family-owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the goal. We reset, and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open eye. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, oh! in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, look for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score! And that is a base hit. The run will score, and freshman pull check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! All right, good evening and welcome to Thomas J. Salido Field here in Verona, New Jersey, one of the closest places for me to go. My name is Zach Smoller, and here to bring you all the action in this American Gold season finale between the Hanover Park Hornets and the Verona Hillbillies. The Hillbillies coming in at 2-6, and six, and they've got themselves a fair catch coming from their 81 of J.P. Alfano after that was lifted in the air from Hanover Park. So Hanover Park won the toss and chose to defer. And before we get moving any further, we'd like to thank all of our sponsors here for today's game. All Class Glass. Tracy Morgan with the, uh, not Tracy Morgan. <laughs> Tracy Franco with Coldwell Banker. Well, that's getting clipped. Uh, Lincoln Tech, the Office Tavern and Grill, Online Computer, Paul Miller, Porsche, the Regina Center LLC, and of course, our game sponsor today, Zeifman Ortho. They will take your smile all the way to the end zone. Go to SiphonOrthro.com and schedule a free consultation. From the shotgun set is Verona's number 10 of Connor DeMassey. As Verona have 
had an issue this season, mostly, well, more on the defensive side, although they've scored only 15 points a game. DeMassey winds back and fires to his handy number 23, and Zach Garmont, Garmont slips a tackle, as actually it wasn't Garmont, that went on over to the number 40 of Brody Maisano, and Maisano's ahead for a first down. Number 44, Brody Maisano, Maisano with a big return back to Hornets territory. Ball spotted on the Hornet 48 yard line, first and 10. So Masano gets himself about 17 yards in the air on the first play of the game. So that's Masano, the number 44 for 17. They hand it off up the middle, and he runs into a big wall of Hornets there. Helping to lead the charge is their number 12 of Nick Williams, who, again, number 12 is not usually something that you'll see in that interior line, but getting the job done as one loss, uh, one yard is lost by Maisano. It is a rainy day, but it's not that cold out today, so we're fortunate, but almost everybody out here in some form of rain gear in this big matchup. I mean, Verona right now is sitting there in a playoff position, but if they win a big game against a team that's a group ahead of them, in Hanover Park, they'll have themselves a nice chance to maybe get themselves a home playoff game. As Garmont makes the grab and he gains about nine. As P.J. DeMilo was able to rack him down with his arms and bring him down. He had about third down and two as the clock continues to run. Once again, with the shotgun set, toes on the 45-yard line. DeMassey, the junior, looks off to the side. And, you know, DeMassey's had himself a pretty good season. 66.1% completion percentage for 1,630 yards. Nine touchdowns. The only bugaboo for him is the 10 interceptions. But you'll imagine he'll clean that up for next year as Hanover Park switches to a man defense. Fire over to the outside, and it's hauled in by Garmont. And he's out of bounds right around that 25-yard line. It's a first down. Garmont, that'll be good for a hillbilly. First down. Another first down here for the Hillbillies who are moving the ball well. Garmont picks up about 15 in the air. So we talk about those two. Zach Garmont only came into this game, only needed 32 yards in the air for 1,000 as the majority of the completed passes this season for the Hillbillies have gone to him. So now we've got the clock moving. As another first and 10 coming from the 25. Deep in Hornets territory, and this is a Hornets team that does not give up a lot of points. They gave up 31 last week, but it was still a rather close contest. They've only given up 12.4 per game this season. Quick little slip screen pass to the outside to Cicchetto, and Cicchetto is able to get about halfway toward the line yes, of game, maybe picking up about three. Luca Cicchetto. Cicchetto brought down by number 55, Finn Kenny. And that's Pick Finn Kenny, the number 55, who has been a big defensive presence this season for Hanover Park, making a lot of hits. Of course, the defense is led by Joey Borello and Hector Lopez the third, And we'll see them running all around the field, making some of those big plays. Second down and a very long seven, maybe just eight. As once again, looks to the outside. They play a soft zone. Garmart's got it. Slips a tackle and tries to get around Chris Mala, who brings him down just short of the goal line. Pass complete to number 23, Garmont. Garmont As he gets about 22 yards the on the catch and run. It's another first down for the Hillbillies. So Verona finding all the soft spots in this rather staunch Hanover Park defense. And now will be a first and goal to go situation. If they've been throwing the ball all over the place, Hanover Park again, their zone defense isn't helping them right now. As they give it off in the middle and brought down by a swarm of Hornets. Once again, it's the number 44 of Bodie and Misano. So Misano may have lost one. Yeah, I think Misano lost about two yards on that carry. So Misano on two carries has lost three yards. Second and goal from the three yard line. So they push him back to the three and the ball started at the one. Shotgun set with four wide receivers, the one setback, Maisano, looking all the way to his left, stares him down, and did he catch it? No, he did not, as it goes That's in and out of the hands. Complete. Third down. Of the receiver, I believe that was number nine, Michael DeMassey. So that's the first incomplete pass of the day as he started off five for five to three different receivers. It's been a slow moving game as Got a couple of out of bounds and then the incomplete pass. Well, the clock is running after the incomplete pass, which I don't think it's supposed to be doing. Well, I know it's not supposed to be doing that. There we go with the three receivers this time on the left. 
Damasi scrambles, looks to his right, fires, and he keep the foot in. Yes, he did, and it's a touchdown for Verona. A quick strike offense in three minutes and 29 seconds. They're in the for the score. Complete to number 23, Zach Garmont. Zach Garmont is in there for the three-yard score, and if I'm correct, he's now got himself 1,000 yards receiving on the season. Let's take another look at this one again. And, you know, it's nothing fancy for Garmont, just this quick little out route. And he's able to burn the receiver as, once again, Hanover Park playing that zone. And that's not going to work against a possession receiver like Garmont. So he's looking good. And now Verona will get set to go with Kieran Patel. Patel with Garmont on the hold. Slippery out, so we got to watch the snap. It is good, and the kick is up, and it's good as well. As actually Verona sent their number 19 of Nasiah Mendez deep. Uh, maybe, is that a freshman job that they have back there? Because the Hillbillies, they've got a berm back there beyond the goalpost that drops down at a rolling hill into a field of trees. And yeah, they did send a freshman back to receive that ball. So in, in lack of a net, Kieran Patel's extra point is good from Patel. And uh, now it's a 7-0 lead. And, you know, I've never seen that before in a field. They had one of the players go back and catch it. So here on senior night, Verona are up 7-0. They've got a student section all decked out in pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month all the way to our right. And, you know, uh, honestly, it's been a pretty big crowd on a rainy day here in Verona. I didn't expect the parking lot to be full when I got here. I parked around the corner. And a lot of Hanover Park fans traveling well, also bringing a tent for their players down on the bench. Now Patel will send one deep, and Filipone and Grismala are back inside the five to receive. So Patel is ready. The Hillbillies are ready. Let's do it. It's about 8.40 left on the clock in the first. This goes up in the air over to Grismala who drops it, and again, very slippery conditions, but he's able to hang on. Now he's got a seal and edge over to the outside. He's got it, but it's a very poor return for Hanover Park as they'll start with the ball right around their own 13-yard line. Ball returned by number eight, Jason Grismala. Grismala stopped by number 11, Jesse Wagner. So it's no secrets that the Hornets want to do. They want to keep the game close and low scoring, but they do have some good offensive pieces. Of course, the sophomore Joey Borello coming in for Mikey Borello was the starting quarterback the last couple seasons. Joey has completed 62.7% of his passes for 1,035 yards, eight touchdowns, and six picks. Also has run for 288 yards, and they've just started getting Asmir Parks, their tailback, really involved in the passing game. He leads the team with 18 receptions. So first and 10, from now they push it up to the 14. They send Bar uh, Philip Hone in motion. He's got it off the screen, gets a good block, and rumbles ahead almost across the 20, and he's brought down forward progress, puts him on the 20-yard line, so it's a gain of six for Philip Hone to start the game. Ball carried by number 11, Joey Philip Hone. So they had him fill a on the screen. Five on the play, second down and five. As this is a Verona defense that has been quite poor so far this year, almost given up four touchdowns a game, 27 and a half points. So Hanover Park, whose offense scores around 20 a game, should uh, you can expect them maybe three touchdowns as that was a dangerous pass, but it was hauled in there by Jack Kovacs, who will haul it in around the 30 yard line, and that's a Hanover Park Lincoln, first down. 13, Jack Kovacs, Kovacs tackled by number 81, John Paul Alfano. So 14-yard grab for Kovacs in the air, and that was almost thrown directly at the Verona corner. The number 11, Jesse Wagner, but Kovacs able to make the cut inside. Here's Borello scrambling to the outside, and he's heaved down by the number 12 of Ethan First, the senior. So because he was scrambling to the outside, it's a loss of yards on a rush, not a sack, but it's a minus five on the ground, and that's not what Borella was looking for here. Uh, Sandover Park now working deep with a second down and 15. 
So second and 15, three receivers at the bottom of your screen with Asmir Parks. The tailback split out to the left as well. Laparno alone at the top. Here's Borello, clean pocket, now under pressure. Scrambles over to his left side, changes his mind. Out to the right, still in pursuit. Now he's going to tuck and run the ball as he gets over the new line of scrimmage and picks up maybe about two yards, so makes something out of and nothing. Two, as it'll be third Borrello. and 13. Borello tackled again by number 12, Ethan Fersh. So that's first on back-to-back -back drag downs. Pardon me, that was a three-yard gain for Borello, but still third down and almost a mile to go for Hanover Park. Keep an eye on P.J. DeMilo in the slot over on the bottom of your screen. He's got the one-on-one -on -one matchup with Jaden Nigro. And the single center field safety of Zach Garmont is back inside of the 40-yard line. Six minutes and 20 seconds left to go in the first. Verona defending their home turf as they've done this season. They are two and six this year, but they are two and two here at home. Borello has some time. Now has to move around the pocket. Fires over in the middle of the field, up in the air, and it bounces off the chest of Philippone. The pass is incomplete. As I mean, that was kind of a jackpot ball. Anybody could have come down with that. Broken up by Garmont. Fourth down. As Garmont was in the way, and Hanover Park will be forced to pump this ball away. So here's Mikey Farrell over inside the 20 yard line and he'll be deep to punt and that first Hanover Park possession again is brought to you by Zeifman Orthodontics. They'll take your smile all the way to the end zone. Their expert team creates winning smiles for patients of all ages in Florham Park. Thanks to a variety of affordable and effective treatment options. The customized care they provide can improve oral health, increase confidence, give you a beautiful smile. Learn more at ZeifmanOrtho.com to schedule a free consultation. And now off and running is Garmon, and we're going to say that a lot today as he's brought down at the 45-yard line. A massive return for Garmon, and I mean, on a senior night, the senior is showing out. They're going to miss him next year. He's a 1,000-yard receiver for the team. You saw what he can do on defense, and let's see how they opt to use him here as he's starting to run the ball as well. He's got 21 rushes for 162 yards. He has not found the end zone as a rusher, but he has as a receiver five times. So we're about halfway through quarter number one here in Verona, Hanover Park trailing by a score. Tomasi from the shotgun set, and he's had all day to throw. Hanover Park trying to put some pressure on and a little bit of a miscommunication as he thought it was an out route. Cutting on the inside was Jesse Wagner. And now we'll find ourselves with second down and 10. It's actually the second straight incomplete pass, or rather second out of the last three, as they did find Garmont with that little three yard hook in the end zone. Verona going from left to right on your screen in the maroon and white, Hanover Park in their road white jerseys with the black letters and numbers. And they are outlined in yellow. Second and 10. Up the middle, and well, yeah, Hanover Park saying, you know, you can throw, but you cannot run. As that's Bodie Masano, and Masano loses Masano. some yards again. Masano brought down by number 51, Luke Reardon. Yeah, that was the big Luke Reardon in to bring him down. Luke Reardon, 6'5", 245, the biggest player that Hanover Park has on their team and also has on their defense as last year, or they graduated Chris Smith, who was the 6'5 receiver that they had a couple of years ago. They also played him at safety, corner, threw him all around, and now Reardon's the big man. Watch Borello potentially bringing some outside pressure coming over from the quarterback's right side. There's Borello again on the linebacker blitz as they fire it in the middle, and that is incomplete as they were looking for Garmont, but he was completely surrounded by Hornets. And that's a spectacular defensive stand for Hanover Park after getting picked apart on that first drive. Italian meatball sandwiches with plum tomato sauce. You know, that's kind of funny. Joe they, <laughs> hot dogs called that almost twice. immediately there from Philippone. I mean, I mean, you know what he's going to do, right? The way that he was lined up over there inside the slot. When he does that, you know that he's ready to go and put some pressure on the quarterback. There's Patel sending a long one. And they'll let it bounce. It'll take a Hornet bounce. And now the ball will settle at around the 15 yard line. So once again, Hanover Park with bad field position, thanks to spectacular special teams by the Silbillies uh, unit. Long time coach Kevin Batty is 
help this team through some ups and downs this season. Again, two and six, not exactly what the Hillbillies are looking for, but they've been a tough team to play against this year as the Hornets are learning right now, coming in at five and two. And Hanover Park certainly hungry for a victory after a, almost a walk-off loss against Paquanic last week. They were down 24 to three going into the fourth quarter. And within eight minutes, they scored three touchdowns to tie it up at 24 apiece before a DeNaples to DeNaples connection in the end zone for Baquanic. Once again, outside Philippone, and he tries to truck down the defender, and Philippone's gonna be stopped for no gain on the screen. Pass complete to number 11, Joey Philippone. Philippone's, Philippone's got number 20, a pair of catches for six yards now. The, play, down the biggest well. catch of the game, the biggest play in the game for Hanover Parks with a, with Park was a 14 yard catch and run from Jack Kovacs. As Hanover Park will take one out and send in Asmir Parks. Back to that spread offense. Borello fires to the outside. Lepardos complete. Rumbles ahead. And does he have enough for the first down? Yes, he does as he picks up 11 in the air. And it's a first down for Hanover Park. To number one, Kevin Lepardos. And that might be the, the shortest. By number 12, Ethan first. The shortest throw that you'll see to Kevin that Lepardos all day. He's ever since last year too. He's been that deep threat on this offense, but this time catching him on a more intermediate route as Hanover Park marching ahead from the 31. Perello in for the keeper, moving to the outside, and he picks up a chunk of yardage as he's brought down primarily by the number 11, Jesse Wagner and picks up about five on the carry. So now Burrell on three carries with three yards after losing five on his first carry. Second down and six. So Hanover Park playing their game up the middle, run slant passes over to the middle of the field as they send Philippone in motion. He's the in-between slot over on the right. Borello scrambling over to that side, the strong side. He's got one lineman beat and completes the pass over on the 42-yard line. That's Philippone, and that's a first down for Hanover Park. Pass complete to number 11, Joey Philippone. And Joey Philippone is really starting to come into his own as a receiver. Last year, he was so big just on the defensive side, didn't really use him offensively. And now he's starting to line up in the slot. Sometimes they'll have him carry the ball on offense, and he's been a big difference maker for this team. As they try to go back to the well, this time they find DeMilo, and P.J. DeMilo is in for a nice gain of eight yards. Pass complete to number 15, P.J. DeMilo. And yeah, DeMilo is the guy. Up by number 81, J.P. Alfano. DeMilo is your guy when you want those middle of the field passes. He's a good possession receiver. They might use him on a jet sweep once in a while. As now Borello heaves over toward the sideline, Lepardos, and it's batted out of the air. Pass knocked away by number five, Gianluca Chiquetto. Chiquetto with a gorgeous play on that ball. I actually thought he might have had a chance to haul that one in, but it was a little too far over his head as Borello got a bit third aggressive on a third and short from midfield. It's now third down and two, and let's see if they go back to that tried and true running game. Of course, they got to get around all these big bodies for Verona, running that 3-4. Fires to the outside. There's Philippone. Third time they've got him on a screen, and he's sent backwards. That's Sal Santos to Trani, the junior. And once again, Philippone stopped for no game. Stopped by number 13, Sal Santos to Trani. And if, if I know Dan Fulton, I know that he's going for this. And yeah, that's exactly what they're going to do. Fourth down and two yards to go with right around two minutes left here in the first quarter at Thomas Salito Field in Verona, New Jersey, right off the campus of the high school. Looking to the outside, and Coach Fulton didn't like what he saw there, so he aggressively claps his hands for a timeout as Hanover Park will get an opportunity to chat things over. So again, we talk about this game being important. I mean, the Hanover Park Hornets are coming into this game over in the top of the rankings in North Jersey Group 2. I think they dropped down a little bit after their loss to Baquanic. And as for Verona, they're kind of on the outside looking in in terms of hosting a playoff game. I mean, they probably will finish inside of the top 16. This is the last chance for either team or really any public school to finish off their regular season.
Uh, it's their number 13 in group number one, and we'll double check. I just want to double check to see what Hanover Park's ranking is. Because I know they were number five last week. As Newton has taken over that spot. Hanover Park only dropped down to seven, so that's not too bad. As of today, Hanover Park will be hosting Lakeland in a first-round playoff game. But, of course, that's subject to change. If they win, they can move up. Also depends what Mawa and Newton and Bernard do in front of them. There are actually four undefeated teams inside of North Jersey Group 2. Westwood is undefeated at 7-0. Caldwell 7-0. Rutherford 7-0. And Bernard's are 8-0. Newton 6-1. And right behind them. Hanover Park last week were the only team in the top five that were undefeated. It's now they give it to Farrell, and they have him on the fake. Farrell over to the outside, and he's brought down as he runs into a group of hillbillies. So they try it with Michael Farrell. We saw them do this last week, and it didn't work for them, and they went back to the well on the play again, and there's nothing to do for Hanover Park. So now Verona coming up with another big defensive stop in their own. Hanover Park moved the ball a little bit better there, but... On a couple of short situations, Hanover Park decided not to run the ball, and it came back to bite him here. So 7-0, and the Hornets are going to lean on their tough defense again. We have to Massey, shotgun set, four receivers. They run almost an identical offense to Hanover Park, but they do throw the ball a bit more. Damasi drops back, fires over to the outside for Garmar, and again, they're playing that soft zone on him as Leparnos will bring him down around the 30. And it's a big That's first down. Number 23, Zach Garmont. Garmont stopped by number 15, DJ Damalio. That effort will be good for another hillbilly first down. So it's another Hanover Park first down. And first you, you got to think eventually Garmont. Hanover Park are going to have to slap a man coverage on Garmont. So right now it almost looks like they have a double team with Demilo. And then back as almost a, a zone playing corner on him is Kevin Lepardos, and that, all that action is at the bottom of your screen. So they'll try to force Tomasi to go somewhere else. There's Garmont, and again, they throw into the double team, and was in the air, and Garmont falls down on the way as P.J. DeMilo was able to get a hand on it. They've already gone to him seven times this game, and he's made five catches. So that little trap worked as they were forcing him into that little in-between section as the corner and the safety were combining on that coverage, and now it looks like they're going to go back to more of that zone, and Philip in is that outside linebacker. There's Hector Lopez over in the middle of your screen as they fire to Garmon on the outside, recognizing the coverage. He slips the tackle and then falls down inside the 25-yard line. Pass complete to number 23, Zach Garmon. So Garmon actually picks up eight on that catch and run on already his eight sixth catch of the, the game. And it'll be a third down and a short two. Third down and two. And once again, Verona knocking on the doorstep of the red zone. This is looking a lot like their first drive of the game where they cashed in for a very easy seven points. Here's Damasi. Hanover Park showing blitz with Kenny and Phil Pone. As Ella pushed themselves back, I imagine Hector Lopez will go in on that blitz as well. Tried to send six against his five-man offensive line, and they do. Hanover Park sends six. They get him in the screen over to the outside, and Garmont actually moves backwards as he traipses out of bounds. Damasi's pass complete to Garmont. As Garmont ends up losing about three yards. Fourth and we're experiencing a couple of technical difficulties here in Verona as we're having some issues with some of the equipment being wet and we'll get the picture back on air as soon as possible. We'll, we'll keep things talking until then. And it looks like they're going to try a long field goal with Kieran Patel. So with the ball over on the 26, this will be a 43-yard field goal for the senior. So let's see if they can take advantage of having one of the best kickers in the Super Football Conference here. This one goes up. It's wobbly off to the left side and it'll be no good from Kieran Patel. So he misses from 43 yards. 43 yard football field goal attempt to complete. And you know, why not try it, right? I mean, you're not gonna, if you're gonna punt, you're probably gonna end up with something inside of the end zone unless you can really get it under control, which Patel can certainly do. But instead they go for it and now Hanover Park are right around the 25 yard line, which is only about eh, six yards ahead of where they would be if it was a uh, touchback punt. So not too bad here. 
for the Verona Hillbillies after all is said and done. And actually, they put the ball over on the, the 20. I thought it was up on the 25, so maybe it was a shorter field goal than I thought. So now the Hornets are all piled up with six seconds left to go in quarter number one. Once again, deep in their own territory, and the 20-yard line is actually the best field position that they've gotten today. Borello hands off to Parks. Parks with room up the middle, and he's able to cross ahead and gain six yards to get more than halfway to that first down marker as the final play of quarter number one. So we are all done with the first... 12 minutes of action, Verona Hanover Park Trail it by a score of 7 to nothing to the Verona Hillbillies. And when we come back, we'll have the second quarter of action here on Morris Sussex Sports. Meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. Introducing Gemstone Orthodontics, where brilliance meets compassion in crafting your perfect smile. With a board-certified orthodontist, Dr. Patel, your smile is in expert hands. Our commitment to the latest advancements in technology bring precision and comfort to your orthodontic experience. Whether you are considering braces or liners for yourself or for your child, call today at 908-852-9899 or visit us at www.gemstoneortho.com to schedule a complimentary consultation. The green wave isn't just what we call ourselves. It represents all we are called to. Let's go! We strive for excellence in mind, body, and spirit. We put in the work in programs that test us, guide us to the colleges we pursue. We live true to putting others before ourselves, to the lifelong connections we've made. This is the Asmir Parks with a four-yard gain and a first down for Hanover Park as we come back here in quarter number two. Verona leaving, uh, leading seven to nothing. As again, we're working very hard to get that picture back up there for you on the screen as, again, between the, the weather and then some of the, well, the lack of shelter that we've got going on here. I think something has gotten wet and we're trying to dry it off and get things all set and ready for you. As now Asbier Farks again having a field day up the middle. It's taking a whole host of hillbillies to bring him down as Asmir Parks picks up nine and is just short of that first down. Parks has three carries for 19 yards in this game. Parks coming into the game with 180 yards on the ground, gaining less than four yards a carry, and he's yet to gain fewer than four yards on a carry in this contest. Second down and one. Back to the well. Parks outside of the guard. And now outside of the 45-yard line as he advances over to the 46, and it's a first down for Hanover Park as he dances ahead for another five. As you can see right here, Asmir is just having an easy time warming his way through this defensive line. It's not like they've got small guys. Michael Kastner there, the nose tackle, also joined by the 66 of Gavin Palmer, are really creating a difficult way to run, at least on that right side. And they've actually been running around their left, Hanover Park, and the number 62 of Frankie Falco Jr. instead of behind Reardon. Now outside for Parks. Parks is able to pick up maybe one or two in the air. And they are going to give him two. So Asmir now with his first Fantastic catch of the game. Three, Parks. Parks up it's already the eighth completion for Joey Borello. And while Hanover Park is keeping the offense of Verona on the sidelines, if you've been sidelined by your smile, score a touchdown with straighter teeth from Zeifman Orthodontics. Again, visit ZeifmanOrtho.com and schedule a free consultation with Dr. Zeifman, today's game sponsor here on Morris Sussex Sports. Delayed handoff. Instead, it's a fake up the middle for Borello, and Borello crosses midfield and is brought down around the 47-yard line, and that'll be a pickup of five for Borello, make it a third and very manageable. Borello with the carry. Now Borello about two four. yards a carry in this game, but on his last two, he's picked up five apiece. And now they'll put Philip Hone in the backfield where his big brother was a staple two seasons ago. It's a tight end and three wide receivers, so a little bit of a different setup here for Hanover Park as they usually just go straight up with four wide. As they give it to Philippone, Philippone with a burst of speed and he's across for the first down for Hanover Park as he picks up six on the ground. 
So well, Joey Filippone is pounding him down and Santos keeps on moving Tony. forward. Will be good for a Hornet first As down. Hanover Park are, first again, down. having their best drive of the game, the starting at their own 20-yard line, and now are approaching the Hillbilly 40. Again, working hard to get that picture back up for you here from Verona High School as they're going back to the ground. Here's Philip Pone, a little bit of a delay, but he's still able now to go ahead 11, off that left Jones side for a gain of three. So it's been the Philip Pone and Parks show now. A couple of tailbacks as he's taken this series. They gave Parks a bit of a breather over on the outside. As Parks has his helmet on, so he'll probably be ready to go for that next series. Second down and seven yards to go. And the tight end that they're looking with right now is Michael Farrell, who we'll usually see as an outside receiver, also serves as the team's punter. Back from that shotgun set. One tight end on the right side as well as two receivers. They pitch to the outside for Philippone, lowers his shoulders, now dances over to the inside, head back down, and is brought down at the 31-yard line, and it's another Hanover Park first down. So Philip Pone this time with eight on the ground. He's got 17 on the ground. As that was Santos Citrani, who's been more of an outside player this game, but forced to pinch in. Right now, he's their safety. As I think they've given, they've moved Garmon either around or he's not on the field. I actually don't see Garmon, who was playing the safety on the last drive. First down and 10 from the 31. And flags fly in all different directions, as we'll see our first penalty of the game. Hanover Park called for a false start. So the Hornets, who were guilty of a handful of penalties last week that really hurt them in the first half, will now stall out a little bit of their momentum here as they'll go for a first and 15. And back from the 36-yard line. And again, I would keep running it with Parks over on that right side where they've got the big Luke Reardon ready to block down. He could block down one, even two guys as now they go with Borello instead to the opposite end and he makes his way back to the original line of scrimmage. So Joey Borello picks up another five. That's three Barry carries in a row Barello. Barello wrapped up by number four. of half Tony first down five. yardages and it'll be a much more manageable second, second down and, and ten, ten yards to go. Five yard pickup on the play. So again, shotgun set with three receivers. The one on top is Kovacs. Lopanos is at the bottom as they give it to Parks. He goes up the middle, finds a hole, and keeps on carrying that ball. And he's just short of the first down marker. But again, another big carry by Asmir Parks. It's his well, second rush three, of nine yards Parks, today. Parks wrapped up by number 12, as we thank Ethan you for bearing Parks. with us, our extraordinary superstar producer, Sarah Trout, getting that camera right point. back on. And she's got to go all the way down to the bleachers, which is not an easy walk from where we're set up here in Verona. So excellent work from Sarah to get us back on as Hanover Park with the ball and under six minutes and 30 seconds left to go in the half they fake it outside to Parks here comes Borello and Borello again is able to juke his way over to the left side and pick up five for another Hanover Park first down and I mean talk about another incredibly consistent move he's had four carries in a row of five yards and they've all been almost exactly the same little jukes to the middle so Hanover Park were living on the outside in their last game. As now they give it to Borello again, and this time they get wise to that inside move as he rolls ahead and picks up only about two on the ground. Gary by number two, Joey Borello. Borello wrapped up by number 50, Aiden Ciferetto. And it's the first time we're saying Aiden Ciferetto's name, the senior O Take lineman and D lineman. Play. Second down and eight. Was able to stumble him there on the shoestring tackle. So now Philippone once again in that slot. He is being covered in that man defense by Dean Algieri. Algieri, thank you. And we'll see if they end up working with him on that screen again. Second and eight. RPO. Dances inside and now is pancaked down by the 73 of Michael Gurgis. Carried by number two, Joey Borello. Borello stopped by. So Borello only really picks up about Michael one. Gurgis. As, yeah, I mean, running right into Michael Gurgis isn't exactly something you want to do as P.J. DeMilo has re-entered the game. As Hanover Park will take one out again, going back to that shotgun set, Asmir Parks in the backfield. DeMilo in that inside slot over on the left with Kovacs at the top of your screen. Philippone and Laparnos over on the right. Looks back. Fires, beautiful slant, Kovacs makes the man miss, keeps moving to the inside and he's brought down just short 
of the goal line, but it's a first down and goal to go from right around the one. Pass complete to number 13, Jack Kovacs. So let's check first out Jack Kovacs again. For the Hornets. As he made the man miss, lowered the shoulder, and made a spectacular little run over to the inside. So Kovacs again for 10 plus yards, gets about 15. Hanover Park in the red zone. They stretch Parks out to the outside. Here's Barillo, and he's in for the score. Joey Barillo. It is his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. And Hanover Park, an extra point away from tying this one up. It's 7-6. to six. And I love what they did here with Asmir Parks. As they stretch him over to the outside as he moved the spy linebacker and then right up the middle with an easy free run was Barello for his fifth score of the year. And now here's Ryan Roberts with Jack Kovacs to hold. Roberts has only missed one extra point this season. He's six for seven. Kick goes up with a lot of power and it is good. Ryan and Roberts Hanover Park are gonna tie this one up by a score of seven to seven. Hanover Park Hornets. And seven. that Hanover Park Hornets touchdown Hornets is brought to you by Zeifman Orthodontics. Have Thank you been sidelined by your smile? We'll be just like Joey Borello and score a touchdown, but this time with straighter teeth from Zeifman Orthodontics. Did you know that once your child's growth starts to slow down, they can no longer correct jaw, uh, there we go, relation problems. I thought they said retaliation problems. As easily as they can when they're younger, will interceptive treatment, oh, I like that Zeifman Orthodontics, more football puns, that occurs between the ages of seven and 11 can give your child's okay, smile the, the best start possible. To, to learn more about how they treat their young patients, visit ZeifmanOrtho.com. That's Z-E-I-F-M-A-N-O-R-T-H-O.com and schedule a free consultation with Dr. Zeifman. So now Roberts will set up the kicking tee over on the 40-yard line, and Hanover Park seemed to at least have an offensive schematic against this Verona defense that stopped them on their first couple of drives. Those up-the-middle runs were very difficult for the Hillbillies to slow down. And now Roberts will send more of a booming kick. Deep for Garmont, just outside of his five yard line. Garmont able to pick up a full head of steam and now he keeps on moving forward and he's laid down by the, well, you know what? I'll dare you to see a kicker that makes a tackle like that as Ryan Roberts was able to slam him away as he continues to run over with the ball, but he's just also picking up the tee. And it's a first down for the Verona Hillbillies who will have four minutes and seven seconds to score before the half. And Hanover Park though, will be picking up that second half um, Kickoff, almost said face off. Way too much hockey being broadcast by me in the past couple of days. So there we go from the 40 yard line again to Massey and the shotgun set. We have two receivers a little bit closer as now we see Garmont move in motion. They try to fake and now they spread him over to the outside, right behind the blocker, finding space to the middle. And beats through a bunch of arm tackles and it's a big first down, 16 the yards on the ground. To number 44, Bodie Maisano. As Maisano. Maisano with a power run brings it into Hornets territory. Brings it back to the 44-yard well, line. Maisano did a nice job there. He had lost four yards on his first three carries and then picks up 15 right away on that one. So now from the 44-yard line, clock continues to run down. The Hillbillies have all three of their timeouts. And DeMassey looks back over to Coach Batty on the, or Batty on the sideline. Calls off the audible signals as they've got Brody... Misano again in the backfield. That's that tailback. Because now it looks like they have. Oh nope, Damasi's going to go back. Thought they're going to work from a modified pistol formation. Instead, same four wide receiver spread. Hanover Park in a man offense as they fire it over to the outside. It's complete to the number nine of Michael Damasi. And Michael Damasi will work ahead for a gain of about four. Damasi complete to number nine, Michael Damasi. So. Connor over to the senior Michael. Picked up on the play, second down and seven. As they pick up about oh, maybe three, maybe four on the in the air over on that out route. Let's see if they go back to that as Demassi is again split out over on the right side, dropping back. Connor Demassi floats one to the outside and on the lead, he's able to complete it and a shoestring tackle by Finn Kenny as the ball came loose, DeMassi but it was picked up by Verona anyway. And Maisano picks up about four. Four yard pickup on the play. Third down and three. Man, we had a really excited fan on that one. 
I don't know if you were able to hear what he said. That's a great catch. Did you see that? I mean, yeah, that's the kind of amped up fans that we like to see anywhere during our coverage here on Morris Sussex Sports. Hope you're having the same amount of fun at home. And a tight contest as the clock's going to kick the uh, click down to two minutes and under in this 7 7 affair. Senior day for Verona, so a little extra juice in as they have split tailbacks there. And one receiver over on the right side. They send their 20, Jaden Nigro in motion to Massey, under pressure. Lopez coming in, and he fires a dart out of bounds to nobody. Pass attempt incomplete. And he lives to find another play as Lopez, the Hanover Park leading backfield tackler, was right on him. Lopez, again, he doesn't look like the biggest guy in the world, but he might be one of the best linebackers in the entire Super Football Conference. Lopez this season has eight tackles for a loss and four sacks. He also has two picks and a forced fumble. Helping out Williams and Reardon and Philip Pone and Finn Kenny, those interior linemen. It's Lopez working from that middle spot. Go with the same formation. This time Garma alone on the outside, and he's being covered one-on-one -on -one by Hanover Park's Darian Iacone. So Ayana Cohn on Garma, and now a timeout coming from the Hillbilly. He says, Coach Beatty not liking what he saw. So minute 39 left. Both teams with seven on the scoreboard. And both teams have done it very differently so far in this game. Verona have done it mostly through their passing attack. Again, save that one 15-yard run. They've been halted at each and every turn on only just four carries in this game. But meanwhile, that air attack from Connor DeMassi has worked out well as he's found Garmont, I believe, seven times already today. And he's completed passes to four different receivers. And on the other side, Hanover Park, it's been run up the middle, up the middle, up the middle. In the beginning of the game, they did attempt a couple of passes over to the outside to varying success, but they realized when they were able to just punch it through, uh, the Hillbillies don't have a lot of answers there in the middle of the field. And despite Bodie Masano having 137 tackles and 10 for a loss, he hasn't been too much of a factor over in the defensive game so far. It's imperative for Verona to at least get three here with Hanover Park receiving the second half kickoff. They'll have 99 seconds to do so. And it's a fourth down and three, so they've got to get this done first. Again, a really good look on the receiver over on the outside. So fourth and three, split backs. As they put Garmont over on the far side of the screen. Drops back, fires, screen to the outside, and Lopez is there! Hector Lopez, another tackle for a loss, as it's another carry or reception of lost yardage to Maisano, and Hanover Park will take over with 1.33 left on the clock. Minute 30 degree to go in the first half. Man, I, and again, we set it up perfectly. Hector Lopez is a bad man over there in the defensive backfield. And again, he doesn't look too intimidating back there. But I mean, if you know, you know, right? And he is incredibly dangerous back there. Yeah, his family knows, everybody in Hanover Park knows. And, you know, he's putting the whole league on notice. And the American Gold Division will have another season of that. As uh, so he'll be back next year. Yeah, and I expect the Sandover Park defense to be almost unstoppable in 2024. Let's see if the offense can make something happen here. They send all four receivers fairly deep. They've got Kovacs, and it's picked off. Interception for the Hillbillies. Who is it? It's the number 11 of Jesse Wagner. So Hanover Park, they were trying to make something happen. Instead, ends up throwing one right into Wagner's hands. It was a decent ball to Kobach, but Wagner making an even better play. And Hanover Park have coughed up the ball with 125 left in the second quarter. Well, Comax was the best guy so far this game. He's got 29 yards in the air, and he did have that little inside move, but Wagner just making a perfect play at the perfect time, able to cut him off and get his hands on that football. So now the Hillbillies with another crack at it to try to put some points on the board before the half. Fires to the outside for Garmont. 
And Garmont slips through two, but not three tackles as Finn Kenny will bring him down at the 45 yard line. It's a first down. Garmont breaks a few tackles, brings it into Hornets territory. And Garmont with a 17 yard reception. That is his second highest 17 yard pickup on the play. Total for him today. First and 10, 45 of the Hornets. Now they're inside Hornets territory yet again. Clock continues to move. Drops back. As Paisano on the outside instead scrambles to the opposite end and Lepanos. Pass attempt incomplete. He is able to help break that one up as that one is incomplete to Massey to Damasi. So that's not the worst thing in the world for the Hillbillies here, though. It stops the clock with 60 seconds left to go. It's second down and 10. You're inside Hornets territory. And, you know, you probably want to get the ball over to the 20-yard line. That's probably the sweet spot there for Kieran Patel. As we've seen Patel in the past couple of seasons kick some pretty good field goals. But I'd say that the part of this he'll do today, especially with the wet conditions and making sure that the snap is good, Probably be somewhere in that 37 yard range. So they're gonna have to move the ball up quite a bit here. Garmont in motion. They fake the handoff to him and now they give it back to their bell cow back in by Sano. And he is ripped down. Or just a gain of one. That was Joey Filippo and it'll be a third and a long nine. Third down and nine. So again, it's been tough running here as Verona gonna call timeout with 54 seconds left to go. Fans stick around at halftime. Well, we'll have some more halftime stuff for you as we'll have some cheerleading action, potentially a marching band performance from Verona. I'll turn my mic on so you don't have to hear about my ramblings of that, but, you know, we're certainly having a nice time out here in Hanover, or rather, well, we're usually at Hanover Park, but out here in Verona, and I'm grateful. It's a nice, easy drive for me here in Essex County, only about 20 minutes away. It took all back roads to get here. Good old Bloomfield Ave, Wachung Ave, getting me over to Fairview, and... Ah, that's where my car is parked over here. So always nice to be coming back, well, kind of back home in the area. And Verona, very proud team. It's won a couple of state championships in recent memories. They've had a couple of down years in the past two seasons. But again, you can see a few bright spots in this squad as the offense does a really nice job in this passing game. Now, they're going to be losing some of their top targets, but you know that Coach Beatty, or Coach Batty, rather, can really get the job done no matter what kind of talent He's given on the field, and you know they've also run into a bunch of tough opponents. I mean, the majority of their division is is a group bigger than them outside of Mountain Lakes. So the division realignment could help them as well. Third down and nine, 54 seconds left on the clock. Trips stacked on the left. Now they move Garma in the slot. As they watch that man coverage go by, here's DeMassey dancing, fires, sideline, incomplete. And that time looking for Chiquetto. So Chiquetto has had a catch for three yards and not much since then. As now with 48 seconds left, they'll send it with Patel to punt. And, you know, this has been the longest final two minutes that we've seen in a long time, at least in the first half. So Patel to punt, personal protector is Bodie Mesano. And head over park with one deep to receive. And that'll be Joey Tantawi. Short punt. It'll bounce, and now it'll roll over towards the end zone, and oh, it'll stop well short of it, right around the seven-yard line. Hornets will start out deep in their own territory. As that's a great punt. That's a nice 37-yard punt there from Patel to get them inside the 10, and uh, it might behoove Hanover Park. Even though they've got a couple of timeouts, they might just want to kneel down here and let things wind through, although... Again, knowing Coach Fulton, they might try to make one more aggressive play before the end of the half. So it'll be first and 10 from right around the seven, seven and a half yard line for Hanover Park, who they have the capabilities to make a couple of big plays, but they might not go for that home run ball after that interception in the middle of the field on their last offensive drive. Joey Tantawi is now the slot receiver to the quarterback's right as they give it to Philip Pone. Philip Pone up the middle, and he lumbers ahead for a gain of five. So Philip Pone actually with his only his, well, second Tackle shortest carry. Tackle by Costigan. As that'll be second down in about five, maybe six. Five, maybe four. Mm -hmm. 
And now everybody completely stood up. And it looks like Hanover Park aren't going to run a play before the half. So that'll wind things down. And at the end of 24 minutes, we're all modded up at seven apiece. Hanover Park with a touchdown in the second quarter. Verona with one in the first. And it's a tight one as we head into halftime here at Thomas J. Saletto Field in Verona, New Jersey. We'll head on over into halftime and we'll keep live for a little while for some halftime entertainment. And when I come back, we'll have the second half of action between the Hornets and Hillbillies right after this on more Sussex Sports. Athletic Fields of America in Montville, New Jersey has become an industry leader in synthetic turf. Serving the greater New York, New Jersey, and Eastern PA regions, we have delivered hundreds of both synthetic turf and natural grass sports fields for youth and recreational levels all the way up to the highest standards and requirements of the NCAA. Our goal with every project is to provide our customers with exceptional workmanship, extraordinary service, and professional integrity while constructing a superior product that you can enjoy for years to come. Visit athleticfieldsofamerica.com.
your hands together for your hillbilly cheerleaders. Great job, girls. And thank you to our Hanover Park Hornet cheerleaders. Thank you, girls. Fans, please put your hands together as we welcome the Verona High School Marching Band. As I said earlier, the future Verona High School band members will be joining our VHS band this evening, playing in the pep band and assisting the pit crew. Welcome.
Fans, please put your hands together for the Verona High School Marching Band. DNA Landscaping, we service all of your lawn care needs. We are a full service lawn care and landscaping company providing traditional needs such as lawn maintenance, planting, trimming, mulch, tree removal, and stump grinding, as well as landscape design and snow removal. With over 10 years of experience serving Morris and Sussex counties for both residential and commercial properties, call DNA Landscaping at 973-223-5845. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. At Pasquarella Brothers, we love creating great food for our customers. Everything is made daily using real fresh ingredients, and you can taste the difference. We specialize in creating gluten-free options for our customers, all prepared in a separate area so there's no cross-contamination. We also pride ourselves on providing unparalleled catering for events big and small. We love what we do. Stop into Pasquarella Brothers, you'll taste the difference. Jen Basilino of the Kosher Real Estate Group, LLC, is a Morris County top real estate agent and New Jersey Circle of Excellence award winner year over year that takes the time and care to understand your real estate needs and concerns. She's extremely successful in representing clients in selling and purchasing a home, new construction, townhouses, million dollar homes, rentals, and even commercial properties. Call her today at 973-202-2103. I enjoy helping nonprofits achieve their goals and really accomplish their mission, namely by nurturing my relationship with them, their staff, their donors, their volunteers, and their board members. I think the key to being trusted is really transparency. What I've seen time and time again is that when you give anything the right conditions, the support, the autonomy, trust, your full attention, it will thrive. This is as true for my clients and for my colleagues as it is for myself here at WIS. step painting and general contracting your trusted partner for all your home needs for over two decades we've brought our clients visions to life throughout northern new jersey our team of professionals and commitment to excellence deliver outstanding results from painting bathroom and kitchen renovations additions remodeling and custom faux work we've got you covered our team tackles projects of all sizes and complexities step-by-step -step painting building dreams one project at a time Choosing a college is a big, big, big deal. But I know I started right, because CCMs are the top 2% of community colleges in the nation. And at County College of Morris, I get to choose over 100 programs. Whether you're just out of high school, like me, exploring career options, like me, or seeking lifelong learning, like me, make CCM your choice, like me. Go big and visit ccm.edu and aspire to be you. Brian, we just got a text from your wife. She wants to trade in her car for something else. Chief, I'm a little busy. Uh, she wants it now. Explain to me how I'm going to do that. We got fast lane, Brian. The fast what? Fast lane. Bring her in. This is us? Paul Miller Fast Lane? Who else would do it? Buy a car? Trade a car? Finance a car? Have it delivered completely online? This is so easy. She could have done it herself. She said you're the car guy, Brian. Isn't that the truth? Get the fast lane, winner. It's the only way to fly. That's fast lane. Powered by Paul Miller. That is the Paul Miller difference. At Paint Puri, we don't just sell paint and paint accessories. We eat, sleep, and breathe it. Not actually, though. That would be weird. 
With our huge selection of incredible Benjamin Moore paints, choosing the right color and finish can be a big decision. Luckily, with over 40 years of experience, we can answer any question you have. Whether you're a seasoned contractor or a DIYer, we have all the tools you need to get the job done right the first time. Ready for your next project? Visit us at Paint Parade or shop online at paintparade.com. WIS gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work each and every day. I'm the CEO of WIS Family Office. I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. I actually used to be deathly afraid of public speaking. I intentionally became an adjunct professor teaching tax, and I also became a Zumba instructor as a way of overcoming this fear of mine. They're both forms of leading and teaching in their own right. Bottom line though, WIS supports my passions. I truly believe that WIS wants me to be the best version of myself, and it's such an amazing feeling that I truly have the freedom to do that here. Angelina's Trotteria, located at 184 Columbia Turnpike, Florham Park, New Jersey. We are your neighborhood BYOB. Stop in and join us for lunch or dinner. Angelina's is proud to offer visitors the following specials. Tuesdays are two for two large pizzas for only $22. On Wednesdays, kids under 10 eat free. Thursday night is pasta night. All pastas on the menu are 20% off. Family serving friends can stop into Angelina's and let our family serve yours. Room is so cold, my fish froze. Mine's so hot, my sneakers melted. Rooms with different temperatures? That means your HVAC system is outdated and wasting energy. At ICS, we'll install an energy efficient system that provides a constant flow of clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature in every room. You could save money each month, and the price we quote is the price you'll pay. Get a quote today. See why we say ICS for HVAC. I see why. Go ahead, take a deep breath. Oh, nice, huh? That's some clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature. That is good, who installed the system? ICS, they're the leaders in HVAC. They make the duct work at their own factory, so we even save some money. That's impressive. You recommend them? <laughs> it's ICS for HVAC. I see why. Hey Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. Autosport Acura of Denville, we know you have a lot of choices when it comes to buying your new Acura. So why shop with dealers that don't value your time or play games with you? Why not choose a dealership that always values their clients' time and has set a benchmark in customer service for nearly 40 years? Make it easy. Choose Autosport Acura of Denville. For sales, service, and a relationship you can rely on, make it easy and choose Autosport Acura of Denville. Second half now at the Thomas J. Salido Field here in Verona, New Jersey. We're all tied up at seven apiece, which a little surprising coming into the second half as, you know, especially the record disparity. But Verona's played this game really tough as Hanover Park will receive the second half kickoff. Patel, low line drive. It's going to bounce a couple of times before being fielded by Joey Philippone. Philippone works his way ahead and crosses the 30. And Hanover Park will set up a shot with their best field position that they've had all day long. JT Baca with the stop. 
So 11.54 as that took six seconds. And once again, we'd like to thank our game sponsor. The start of the second half is brought to you by Zyphen Ortho. Run offense for your smile with affordable treatment options from Zyphen Orthodontics. Did you know that they offer a number of discrete treatment options? If your child is hesitant to metal braces, they could be a good fit for clear braces, clear aligners, or behind the teeth lingual braces. They provide the perfect smile solution for every patient. And learn more at ZyphenOrtho.com and schedule a free consultation with Dr. Zyphen. So we thank him very much, or we thank Dr. Zeifman, rather. We thank them very much for bringing us today's contest. As here's Philippone as Hanover Park going right back to the well, and he's going to cross midfield. Might have been brought down just short as they're going to give Hanover Park the ball at the 49 and a half yard line, but it's a 19 yard gain on the ground and it's a first down for Hanover Park as Philippone carried the ball only four times in the first half, and this is his longest run of the game. Hanover Park's only touchdown has come from Joey Burrell, a little two-yard dance up the middle. As again, they were halted in a lot of places, but now this offense seems to figure out that the holes are right up the middle. Here's Borello, finds a hole off tackle, and he's hauled down after a solid gain of about six. Borello with the carry, Costigan with the stop. And Costigan is the one to bring him down. That's Shane Costigan, the senior. Second down and three. And that is a carry of seven yards, the largest of the day for the Hanover Park quarterback. They're going again with that single tight end set, and Michael Farrell is providing a lot of big blocks as we saw him come through that time. And with forward progress, Hanover Park Bangle should be Hanover picking the ball up. Uh, about a yard as the Hillbillies third knock him down. down and, and it'll be third and two. So Hanover Park again, after three up the middle runs, now find themselves in a bit of a pickle here as it looks like Verona is really stacking them. Box in on him now. This might be a good time to go outside with the screen to Philippone, which is a play that they were in love with back in the first quarter. They actually ran it three times. Laparno's the load receiver on the bottom of your screen. Farrell's the tight end. Instead, they give it right back to Philippone. Philippone navigates his way in front and is brought down by four different hillbillies. And that's a gain of about five, maybe six, and a first down for the Hornets. First down, Hornets. So Hanover Park now with four carries for 34 yards to open up the third quarter. And now they give it right back. Philippone pounds his way through, and he's across the 30-yard line. Hanover Park with another big gain, and this time of eight. And it has, well, really silenced this crowd here in Verona that was roaring in the beginning of this contest. Now, again, part of it might be the rain. Part of them might be the line at the concession stand. But Hanover Park certainly doing themselves a lot of favors here as Philippone will rumble himself ahead. Did he get enough for the first? I think he Gary might be just short. 11, Joey Philippone. Philippone by number 44, and you know, I might accidentally say his older brother's name the way that he's running the ball. Down. Joey Philippone being used as a running back. And again, we said he's kind of that gadget player. They'll use him as a wide receiver. They'll put him in on the slot. They'll have him as a running back. And of course, he's an imposing presence as a linebacker. And now Hanover Park with another third and short. Let's see if they give it back to him. Stretch him to the outside. Here's Borello. Tries to go off tackle. Nowhere to go. As there to bring him down is J.P. Alfano. As they drive him back. Did he get anything on that play? And no, he did not. As Joey Borello loses a yard. Alfano brings him down. And it'll be a fourth down and two. Fourth down and two. Hanover Park tried to fake pump before. They didn't get it. So now I think they'll just try to run something from their base offense. We're tied up at seven and have gone through about three minutes of gameplay here in the second half. They move Borello from the left to the right, or Philippone rather. And now Borello turns on the Jets, dances through, runs into a pile. And how many yards did he gain? Not enough. It's no gain. And Verona stand their ground for a fourth down stand. And Hanover Park have turned it over on downs. Alfano again putting together an electric stop for the Hillbillies. Turnover on downs, your Hillbillies will take over. And it's wild to think, I mean, usually, you know, when it's rainy, you expect a slower type of game, but sometimes that's because they're playing, you know, on the grass in the mud. This is all turf, and it's still been almost at a standstill between these two squads. It's now back for Connor DeMassey. Shotgun set. And one back in there as Finn Kenny 
Approaches him from behind. Lopez needs to help out. The ball is loose, and it's picked. No, and originally picked up by Hanover Park, and then it continued to squirt through as Sal Santos Citrani just saved Verona from a big turnover. My son with the carry. Loose ball recovered by the Hillbillies. Actually, that helped the that helped the Philbilly, uh, the Hillbillies as my Sano picked up four, and then Detrani ended up picking up another seven by recovering that fumble. So Verona with a lucky break there as the ball was knocked loose by Kenny from behind. But the Hornets unable to pick it up for the turnover as they've committed the only turnover of this game, the interception back in the first half from Joey Borello in the middle of the field. Two receivers split out. Jaden Nigro this time over to the left side, floating pass and nowhere near the 44 of Bodie Misano. And this pass will fall incomplete. Misano had three catches for 20 yards back in the first half. So Verona looking for that little short pass to Misano. As you saw right there, they sent the sophomore Nigro over to the outside, almost as a lead blocker for that play, but he led his running back a little bit too much that time. So second down and 10, Hanover Park set right back up in their stacked defense. Indicating man coverage, they fake the handoff and now it's back over for Damasi who will run into a couple of corners and he's brought down for a gain of five as Damasi's gonna be a little slow to get up it looks like. Now there's a couple of different things down as you know, Damasi is down there on the ground and you know Hanover Park I mean there's a few things that happened on that play because Damasi it looked like he fell or was trying to slide but in the process of that Hanover Park were already on him the Verona fans want a late hit I don't think they're, they're going to get one here but in the meantime they're going to check on Damasi and we're going to take a timeout here on Morris Celtic Sports that the most valuable thing West offers is freedom. The freedom to make the most of your role, to really go beyond the job description, the freedom to think differently and be rewarded for it, and the freedom to show up as 100% who you are. parents of young athletes. Did you know that safe medication disposal not only protects your young athletes, but also the environment they play in? Be a proactive guardian. Safeguard your home by disposing of medications properly through drop-off sites in New Jersey, located at most police departments and designated pharmacies. By doing so, you help prevent pollution of our precious environment, ensuring clean waterways and healthier surroundings for your young champions. Make a positive impact on their lives and the planet. Safely dispose of unused and unwanted medications today. Uh, we're back in action, and you know the officials that paid the price of admission for this game had a couple of words to say as now they'll go almost to a modified Wildcat situation as things Zach Garmont is going to take over for Connor DeMassey. They do have John McInerney, or McInerney, there we go, a freshman, but I don't think they're going to use him in this situation, especially in this close contest. So under seven minutes left to go, and they're going to further evaluate the starting quarterback over on the sideline. As, again, they go with Garmont. Hustles to the outside and is wrapped down out of bounds by Jason Grismala and a pickup of two for Garmont, his first carry of the game. And, again, we really hope that Connor DeMassey is okay. It took him a minute before coming up, and now we've got a flag on the play. I wonder if they're going to say Garmont was out of bounds first before Grismala dragged him down. No, actually... It looked like it was a bench warning on Verona. As they were saying that their players and coaching staff were a little bit too close to the field to play. And instead it'll be fourth down and four. So no, no straight up infraction as now Patel will go back to boot this one away. So Connor DeMassey now, I mean, he's walking around on his own power and over on the sideline, he's without his helmet. As now here comes Patel, up in the air, end over end kick as it just hangs up there. Not a lot of distance, especially for a Patel kick as it'll actually rumble backwards and Hanover Park will take over on their own 35 yard line. It looked to me like Patel got a little too far behind that punt. 
And it ended up rattling back on him. There's no real discernible breeze out here today either. And we've seen some booming kicks from Patel before. But again, I mean, not every kicker is going to have his best stuff on each movement. And it's not like he shanked it either. As he did flip the field and put Hanover Park back over in their own territory. As the Hanover Park Hornets will go back on offense. And you can run offense for your smile with affordable treatment options from Zypen Orthodontics. They, have an off or they offer a number of discreet treatment options. Clear liners behind the teeth. Lingual braces, of course, classic metal uh, braces. Go to ZeifmanOrtho.com to schedule a free consultation today. Here's Borello all the way downtown, and it's incomplete as they're trying to get it over to That's Joey Tentawi. Well, Andover Park trying to capitalize immediately. They hadn't taken the shot downfield since the interception, and that was a pretty decent ball to Tentawi, but just slightly overthrown. As he did get it over the top of the defense, but Unfortunately for Hanover Park, it was also over the top of their wide receiver. So now again, this will keep Verona on high alert as they fake the give over to Philippone and instead falling forward will be Joey Borello who picks up about four yards. Borello with the carry, third down and five. So now here on third down, about six yards to go, maybe five and a half, Hanover Park back in that spread defense as again, Stuck in a stalemate here in Verona, New Jersey. Hillbillies coming into this game, ranked 13th in North Jersey Group, or rather, North Group 1, Hanover Park, ranked number 7 in Group 2 of North Jersey. As they speed over to the outside, floating ball, and that's incomplete to Lamparno, says, I mean, that ball was out of bounds, right out of the hand. So they look for Lamparnos again, they don't get anything. And now Hanover Park with about five and a half yards to go. Looks like they'll be ready to send it away with Mikey Farrell. So Burrell was out, Farrell is in as Hanover Park with a good opportunity around midfield to really move this football. They took a shot downfield and then they just couldn't quite recover. So now it'll be Farrell to kick it away to Garmon who's been very busy today. Low snap. Farrell, booming punt, as it'll continue to carry inside the Verona 20. Garmont keeps going back on it, and now he's found himself all the way back in his own territory and now brought down at the 20-yard line. It looks like we might get a block in the back, though, or at the 25-yard line by Hanover Park's number 20 of Vin La Sala. And I did see one of those pink flags for Breast Cancer Awareness Month on the field, and it was back behind where the tackle was made. So that would lead me to believe it's either a hold or a block in the back against the Hillbillies. Right now they haven't moved the football. As Coach Fulton is pretty far out there on the field. Trying to listen in as I think the officials might just place this ball. I mean, we saw flags on the field, but no motion. Oh, there we go. Oh, we've got ourselves offsetting penalties. So we had a personal foul over against Hanover Park, and it was a hold on the Hillbillies. Offsetting penalties on the play. Wait, why are they moving the ball up if the penalties are offsetting? Fans, please get your blue ticket ready. 50-50, $330. Yeah, to there the we go. Now they're moving. The, yeah, Dan Fulton, again, using that charm of his to help the officials make the right call here. Yeah, because if the penalties are offsetting, it doesn't matter if there's three three penalties on one side and one on the other. They're offsetting, and the ball just goes back to where it's down. So the ball should be at the 25-yard line here. As the officiating crew having a difficult time figuring out where to spot this ball right now. But again, it was a personal foul on Hanover Park side, and it was a hold on the Verona side, it looked like. And again, when the penalty's offset, it, that's just it. All right, so there we go. They are going to put the ball back on that 25-yard line as they started moving all the way up to the 40, as if they were only going to assess the Hornet penalty. All right, now the official is talking about the offsetting penalties, and they'll be good to go. So even with the offset, though, it looks like they're moving the ball again. I, I, and where Garmont was brought down, why is the ball all the way back there? If there's offsetting penalties, that ball needs to be on the 25-yard line. I, I, 
Listen, to my understanding of the rules, that's where the ball should be going. Again, the officials know more about the game and the rule book than I do, but it But do they stack penalties if they uh if they are on either side or I guess they must, yeah. All right, so my understanding of the rule must have been wrong. If Verona had two penalties and Hanover Park had one, what I said was incorrect before. I guess they do have the initial penalties offset, and then if there's an additional one, they tack it on. But my understanding of the rules was it was always, no matter how many penalties on either side, they would just clear offset. But instead, a bad break for the Verona Hillbillies. So now inside their 10. And again with Garmont, sprints to the outside, finds an edge, and he's laid out from behind by Hector Lopez III. But Garmont with a solid carry there as he gets about five yards, maybe six on the ground. Garmont tackled by number 54, Hector Lopez III. So Garmont with his longest carry of the game as he picks up six. And, man, I, I do not envy any coach that has the game plan against Verona's number 23. What a dynamic player that he's shown to be in this contest today. And now we got a whistle on the field, and it looks like we've got a timeout, or an injury timeout, rather, as we've got a Hanover Park Hornet down on the turf, and we'll on the field. take a quick break while it's being tended to here on Morris Sussex Sports. We're tied at 7. Brandy Brosian of Compass Real Estate. Brandy wants to sell your home with ease and maximize your return on investment, providing a personalized approach that includes deep cleaning to staging to professional digital exposure, Brandy's innovative approach provides so much added value that you and your home will feel the VIP difference. Don't wait another day. Reach out to Brandy Brosian today. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage. Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. Well, that's Hector Lopez the third that is walking off on his own power, but he's got a trainer with him. So now both teams without key players. Hector Lopez, you know, the best defensive player for Hanover Park and one of the best defensive players in this division. And Connor DeMassi and his big arm on the sideline and still without his helmet. Over on the Verona bench. So knotted up at seven apiece and two stars will be inactive, at least for this play. Back for Garmont. As he fakes the handoff over to the outside, as it looks like Verona has certainly prepared for this situation as they're running this Wildcat very smoothly. Garmont able to pick up another two, maybe, th no, it's three yards for Garmont. And it'll be third down in a very short one. Or not, or he picked up four. The initial spot from the official looked like it was back a yard, but now they've got him in there. So Verona have rushed the ball for about a hair under... 850 yards coming into this game. So they are a good rushing team, but that was still just 33% of their offense. They're going to have to lean into it now. As now they go with Garmont. He's going to throw as he completes it over to the outside. And it's good for a gain of about seven as he gets it over to Gianluca Cicchetto. And they're halfway to that first down marker. Pick up of six on the play, second down and four. So good adjustment there. I didn't think we'd see them throw the ball at all here with Garmont behind the center. But no, they're going from the standard shotgun set. And this could cause some problems for Hanover Park, especially without their star linebacker. Now they have Garmont on the outside, he dances ahead, rumbles forward and falls down at the 39-yard line. It's a first down for Verona. Jason Grismala in at the tackle as Garmont from the direct snap picks up seven for the first. And this is a very close game reminiscent of Verona's last contest against Glen Ridge. Where they lost by just a single point. 
and currently not possible in this scenario right now unless they score, go for two, and Hanover Park scores and only manages to get one on an extra point. Under four left in the third quarter. Verona still deep in their own territory on their own 39-yard line. As they give the ball now to the number 44 of Boney Masano, and Masano is able to pick up five yards, second down and five. And Finn Kenny there on the bring down, and looks like Hanover Park have made a defensive adjustment now. As Jimmy Casola, the sophomore, 5'7", 165, is gonna be asked a lot, taking over Hector Lopez in that inside linebacker position. I can't see him over on the sideline yet, so they might be giving him further looks. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I think they're testing out his right leg. So again, hoping that the Hanover Park Jr. is all right. And again, that both injured players that were hurt in this game could get back in action. Garmont takes the snap, fires immediately to Niger on the outside. Crosses the 45, keeps on going, and Michael Farrell then brings him down on the opposing 45-yard line. A catch and run from Nigro. He picks up 10, and it's another hillbilly first down. And you guessed it. That's good for another hillbilly first down. So now the crowd's starting to slowly get back into this one for Verona. Hanover Park again, two and two at home. Hanover Park are two and one on the road. And again, Garmon from the shotgun set. He's flanked off to the side by Misano. Receiver at the bottom of your screen is Chiquetto. And they've targeted him plenty today, already three times. Garmont, hands off. Misano finds an edge and is brought down just short of the 40. And it's another pickup of five in Verona, just chipping away at this Hanover Park defense. Five yard pickup on the play, second down and five. So Misano picks up another five. He's got 10 yards on his last two rushes. Two minutes left here in the third, and scoring has been at a premium in this contest so far in today's game. 7 7. Hanover Park scored in the second quarter, and Verona scored in the first. Now a little bit of an inverted trips over on the far side of your screen. Garmont going to rush it on the outside and jumps around Farrell. Did he get enough for the first? No, he didn't. And I believe he only picked up maybe two yards there. A little bit of an aggressive move there by Garmont. But nonetheless, it'll be third down and about three to go. Ah, oh, we've got executive producer George Muha in our midst today, and he he stopped the rain. Usually you want to be the usually you want to be the bringer of rain, George, but you stopped the weather here today. You're keeping us dry. <laughs> Third down and four. I love getting on George's Instagram. That's one of my favorite things about this company. As now we find ourselves with 88 seconds remaining here in quarter number three. Garmont, who's been doing well in the stead of Damasi, who's got a strong arm, but again took a hit to the head. And it's on the sideline, probably, I would guess, until the end of the contest. He's walking around with no helmet. Third and four. Garmont outside. Pinching him in is Williams, and they stop him at the 40-yard line. And Hanover Park stopped Garmont for a loss of one. And now it's decision time here for Coach Beatty as this offense has been moving the ball quite well. And it looks like they are going to go to their starring Kieran Patel. Kieran Patel is a superstar from the kicking and punting position. He's been so good for Verona during his tenure. I believe he's a three-year varsity player because I remember seeing him here two years ago. And he'll take it, field it like a shortstop, and there's the Kieran Patel punt that we were looking for earlier. Hanover Park going to let it bounce. Tintawi makes a good decision as it'll go in the end zone for a touchback. So a lot of air there from Patel, but ultimately it'll be a net of about 25 on the punt. And with 47 seconds left in the third, Hanover Park will pick up the ball right back. So an issue today for both teams really, lack of big plays. I don't think either team has a play of over 20 yards in this contest. As both defenses have really stepped up. Yeah, Hanover Park's biggest play was a 15 yard catch and run from Jack Kovacs and an 18-yard reception from Zach Garmont is the biggest play for Verona. So, you know, both sides still looking to really find their footing here 
And that's a big reason why this score is tied up at seven late in the third. First and 10 from their own 20 for Hanover Park. Borello fakes the handoff to Parks on the option and he falls forward, maybe picks up two. And it'll be second down and eight for the Hornets. Now again, this game in the regular season, I mean, not a lot of movement up and down for either of these teams can really happen in terms of their placement inside the rankings, but especially for, if Verona wins, this could really help them out. Pitch outside, Parks spins, has two men on, and he gets rolled down by the big number 22 of Dean Algieri. Number three, Azmir Parks. Parks stopped by number 22, Dean Algieri. And that was Algieri. They actually get him down for a loss of one after the pickup of three. Loss of one on the play, third down and nine. And third down and nine, and again, Hanover Park have really struggled in these situations, the as they'll have a little extra time play. to think about it. So we'll head on over into the fourth quarter. It is a seven to seven tie contest after a scoreless third, and with 12 minutes left to go, we'll see which team blinks first right after this on Morris Sussex Sports. Contact Mary Camito for an auto quote today. Meet James Ultimo, your trusted licensed real estate professional at Exit Realty Connections in Hackettstown, New Jersey. With over 36 years of customer service excellence, James is the smart choice whether you're buying or selling. Your dream property journey starts with James Ultimo. Contact me today to turn your real estate dreams into reality. James Ultimo, 973-214-6448. This game is brought to you by Aaron Mizzarelli of State Farm in Randolph. My licensed and experienced team members are here to serve you for all of your insurance and financial service needs in New Jersey and New York. We offer excellent customer service and our office is conveniently located in Randolph, New Jersey. For a free auto, home, life, or business quote, visit us at AaronMizzarelli.com or call us at 973-389-9999. All right, we've returned to action now. Fourth quarter, Hanover Park deep in their own territory on a third and nine as neither team was able to break through in quarter number three. Very close contest here, vastly lower scoring. Hanover Park have done well in their last fourth quarter. They scored 21 points as this has gone down far and they attempted it to Laparnos and Chiquetto breaks it up. So now it'll be fourth and nine and Hanover Park Definitely forced to punt this one away. As quarter number four is brought to you, you guessed it, by Siphon Ortho. At Siphon Orthodontics, they make it easier than ever to achieve a confident smile thanks to their five-star care and affordable treatment options. Their light force customized 3D printed brackets are built perfectly to match the unique shape and orientation of your teeth. If you're looking for an orthodontic practice for the whole family, you're in the right place. And to learn more about everything they have to offer, visit ZeifmanOrtho.com. That's Z-E-I-F-M-A-N-O-R-T-H-O.com and schedule a free consultation. At the Hornet 46 yard line, first and 10. So big punt in the air, but. This opportunity to thank Tonight's post-game meal sponsor, the Hanover Tennessee Park really family. failed to flip the field this time around as Verona will have plenty of time to travel 46 yards. And I'll tell you what, they've looked really good with Zach Garmon in at quarterback. So first and 10, and it looks like Garmon's going to close out this game. So again, we hope the, the injury over to starting quarterback Connor DeMassey isn't too serious and that he can play in any future playoff games moving forward. Of course, the health of all the athletes is paramount. Garmont back, Reardon, slips through the tackle. And now Hanover Park trying to bring him down with Nick Williams. And well, that's the problem when a running back is playing quarterback. He knows how to carry it through those arm tackles as Garmont is able to pick up five. Philippone and Nick Williams combination tackle after he just barely script, uh, slipped through Reardon's grasp. Hillbillies looking to pick up their third win of the year. They've had a long regular season. They come in at two and six as we see an exchange of hugs from Kieran Patel and Connor DeMassey over on the sideline. It's another good run by Garmont. 
who's carried the ball seven times today. He's also the team's leading receiver, but stepping up in a big way when his coach needs him. This one is fired low and incomplete. The target that time was Jaden Nigro. It'll be third down and six now. Third down and five. Well, the scoreboard's saying six. The field to me looks like five yards. After that Garmont run, and again, it's been a battle of the defenses so far in today's game as Hanover Park's usually potent offense really stalling out. Verona have only scored about 15 points a game, but even there, well under their average. Garmont directly up the middle, pounds his way through the shoestring tackles, and he runs into a wall around the 35, but he's got plenty for the first down as Garmont picks up seven. That's a tough run there by Zach Garmont, able to worm his way through and around this staunch Hanover Park defense. Again, looks like they're still operating without. And that play will be good for another Oh, no, they're not. Hector Lopez is back out there. So they know what the formula is right now. It's going to be quick passes and short runs, which is what the Hanover Park offense likes to run themselves. So you'd imagine their defense would be used to this, but again, they certainly did not scout against Zach Garmon or prepare for him in at quarterback. So, you know, curveball that Verona, you know, didn't want to have to throw, but were forced into due to the injury to their starting signal caller. Garmont, quick throw outside, incomplete, too much heat on it. Pass attempt incomplete. Second down. That time was over to Michael DeMassey. Here on senior night in Verona, again, a robust fan section. It's thinned out a little bit, although I think a lot of them are now down back behind the field over on the left side, and plenty of people have gone and grabbed a snack. It stopped raining, though, and it's really turned into an absolutely gorgeous evening here in Essex County. Under 10 minutes left to go, knotted up at 7 apiece. Verona marching ahead, now on the opposing 35-yard line with a second down and 10 to go. And now Garmont whispers something in Maisano's ear. He hasn't carried the ball too much in the second half, only two times. Drops back, plenty of time. Hanover Park struggling with the pass rush. Now Williams away as he breaks to the outside and oh, he's forced out of bounds. Yeah, oh, flag on the play as I, I, saw, on the play. I saw a block in the back. I wonder if that's what they're going to call here as it looks like they were really working in on Michael Farrell. And they pushed him from behind, so this should be moving backwards and result in a second down and long for Verona. And it is a block in the back going against the Verona Hillbillies. As Yeah, we saw that. Pretty, I mean, if we can see from up here, they certainly saw it from down there. And now that'll bring them all the way back around the 45 or 50 yard line. And instead it is, a, I think they're gonna move it from the spot of the foul. So they're gonna have it on the 43 yard line. So we learned earlier that yeah, if there's offsetting penalties before they, they do stack them. So that's why that ball ended up all the way back by Verona's end zone earlier. Second down and nearly 20 for Garmont. Take it on the quarterback draw, right up the middle. Now speeds again over to the outside. Tries to juke around to Milo, gets in his face, and is forced out for a gain of two. It'll be third and about 17. Pick up of two on the play. Third down and 17. So third down and 17, a long way to go. Hanover Park gonna have Grismala, their center field safety, probably very busy on this play. And this is going to be up for Verona's offensive line to see if they can give Garmont the blocking he needs to either rip off a big run or fire something down the field. He does show that he's had a strong arm. Reared in from the outside, and he tipped that ball as wobbly pass was hit by Reardon, and now it'll be fourth down and 17. What a great play by Luke Reardon as he was able to find his way along, uh, rather along the edge, beating the right tackle position, and got that hand up to get just enough of a piece of that football to make that pass difficult and float out of bounds. So now back out there is Kieran Patel. Hanover Park looking for a big return from Joey Tentawi. 7-7, tied up with under nine minutes left 
here in the final game of the regular season. Patel with time, airs it out, this time with hang time. So not much danger of this one falling into the end zone. And wow, did he chip that one right down over around the 16 yard line as another signature Kieran Patel punt nets around 30 yards. And now we've got another penalty marker down on the field as we'll wait patiently for what the officials have going on over the markers on the 25 yard line. And right now they've, I mean, they've got us kind of all on the edge of our seat. As the officials with some long distance deliberation. And now we've got it looks like a block in the back against Hanover Park. And that's block such a danger. Now the odd thing about that is there was no return. And I believe that would be a half the distance to the goal penalty. So Hanover Park will be back deep in their own end. And again, with the dearth of big plays in this contest, you know, their best bet might to just try to get it at least to midfield if they can... I mean, that might almost be a win for them if they could punt the ball and force Verona the distance because neither team has really been able to march downfield in this contest. They've both taken advantage of good field position on their scores. All right, so Hanover Park still with plenty of time, under nine minutes left on the clock in the fourth quarter, but, I mean, something's got to give between these two teams as the offenses have really stalled out in the second half. The Hornets have tried a couple of deep balls, but... It just hasn't been in the cards tonight. As now they'll almost certainly keep it on the ground. Right around the nine yard line and you know Barella with this back to his own end zone. First and 10. Coming from the nine yard line. Hanover Park spread out as they complete the pass over to Philippone and Philippone is brought down by, by Nigro. Nigro. Philippone's gonna pick up about three yards in the air, second down and seven. And they've loved that screen, but again, just haven't been able to get past that initial level of the defense with too much fervor. But for Philippone, it's his fifth reception of the game, but he's only got 16 yards out of him as he had a couple for no game. Second down and seven. Philippone the setback. As they had a disguise blitz, now Philippone looking to pick up some blocks on the outside, spins, falls down. And it's about a yard short Jerry of the first down Leonard, marker. By number 12, Ethan Fersh. Oh no, he just got enough for the first down. So he picks up seven and Hanover Park will move the six ahead. That effort will move the chains for the Hornets. And again, it took a while for them to make the decision on whether or not the ball was going to get spotted at the 30, but or rather at the 20, but that's where we're finding it right now. So Hanover Park with the offense. Starting to move things forward as the clock continues to tick down. And again, at the pace that this game has been going, they might be able to eat up the entire clock if they can go down even for a score. Here's Borello now. He'll fake the handoff and work up the middle, and he's got a big carry as Joey Borello for seven yards, and Hanover Park continue to pound this ball up the gut of this Verona Hillbillies defense. Borello with the carry, Maisano with the stop. Borello's already got 15 carries in this game. Second down and three. As for the second game in a row, this Verona defense is putting together some of their best defensive performances that we've seen out of them. Second down and short. Borello again dancing through the linebackers and he's across the 40 for another big first down for Hanover Park. Gain a 13 on the ground for Joey Borello. Joey Borello's got 20 yards on his last two rushes. So Hanover Park have already moved this ball 31 yards as they approach midfield. And let's see if they keep going back to that up the middle run. I mean, that's where they found their most success. Grabs it again. Philippone off tackle, falls forward, picks up three. As again, these chip away type of rushes are what they need. As long as they don't have any negative plays right now, they've been getting enough yards on each rush to justify consistently running very similar plays up the middle. Second down and six. Second and six after a pickup of four by Philippone, his 10th carry of the contest. Borello, 
He's going to keep it. Bounces off his lineman and manages to pick up. Actually, you know what? I think he picked up three yards on that rush. So it'll be third and four as he really made something out of nothing on that run. And now the clock's ticked down under the five minute and 45 second mark. Hanover Park marching ahead. And Verona, I mean, both sides have to be gassed, and we see a jump from the Verona defense. No flag on the play. I guess they're going to say that Shane Costigan did not cross the line of scrimmage, but he definitely hopped in the very beginning. Little pitch to the outside. Filippo in room to run. Lowers the shoulder, keeps on going, and he's brought down at the 42-yard line. It's a first down for Hanover Park as Filippo picks up about uh, 10, maybe 12. And these Hanover Park Hornets now running with a vengeance. So now back in enemy territory. Five minutes left to go as we're still tied at seven. As again, they're keeping an eye on Shane Costigan. Who's working on Frankie Falco Jr. Luke Reardon is the guy that Hanover Park likes to run behind that big right tackle. Borello off the snap. Keeps going forward and he's finally hammered down there by Bodie Mesano. As Hanover Park again with some nice first down Chuck yardage. So he'll pick up about three yards on the ground. Second down and seven. So second and seven for Hanover Park. And again, I don't think we'll see the ball leave Joey Borello's hands unless he's pitching it outside to Philip Hone. No reason to pass here, especially the way that they've been able to run on the Hillbillies. Well, they faked it to the outside, and as I say that, they go with another pass play. They fire over towards the middle, and it's complete! Joey Sensawe, end zone! Touchdown, Hanover Park! Well, they had me fooled, they had the Verona defense fooled, and a big home run play to Joey Sensawe and Hanover Park have their first lead of the ball game. We see Tentawi at the very end of that play as he gets hit. It's a 40-yard catch and run for the junior. And now it's time for Roberts to kick this extra point. That was the best deep pass that we've seen from Joey Borello this season. And this team's got a bright future ahead of them with that young man calling the signals under center. Kovacs to hold, Roberts to kick, and this is a crucial extra point here. No wind, clear skies, the rain has stopped. Reared in the long snapper. So get it through, the hold is good. It's up, and it's through the uprights, and Hanover Park have taken themselves a 14 to seven lead. So after no scoring since the second corner, Hanover Park have managed to take a seven point lead with 4.07 left to go. And Verona, unfortunately for them, without their starting quarterback. Now they're gonna have to come up with some big plays of their own. Hanover Park with the first play of 20 or more yards in this game, and it's double that. As that Hornets touchdown once again is brought to you by Zeifman Orthodontics as he's given Hornets fans something to smile about. At Zeifman Orthodontics, they make it easier than ever to achieve a confident smile thanks to their five-star care and affordable treatment options. Their Light Force customized 3D printing brackets are built perfectly to match the unique shape and orientation of your teeth. If you're looking for an orthodontic practice for the whole family, you're in the right place. To learn more about everything that they have to offer, visit ZeifmanOrtho.com. That's Z-E-I-F-M-A-N-O-R-T-H-O.com and schedule a free consultation today. Roberts to kick this one off. He's lined up like he wants to kick it short. Puts his hand in the air. Garmont is deep to receive. The Hornets recovered an onside kick last week. I don't know what they're going to do with it now. And now Roberts changes his mind. They're going to send this one deeper. Goes up. Now looks like they're trying to avoid Garmont, and they do succeed as it's handled by Jesse Wagner. Wagner with room up the middle or over the 40-yard line and back to the 41, and the special teams for the Hillbillies has been nothing short of spectacular today on these kick returns. Wagner. Wagner stopped by number six, Austin Pastina. 
And now the Hillbillies will have exactly 240 seconds to move this ball 59 yards down the field to try to tie it. We'll start this drive with good field position just outside of their own 40 yard line, first and 10. Verona's exactly only two victories this season have come contest. here at Thomas J. Saleto Field. And now they'll start with Zach Garmont in the shotgun. Three receivers on his right and one up top to his left. The lone receiver is Mike DeMassey. And the setback, Bodie Misano. Garmont's been running it a lot from the shotgun. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Hustle to the outside, fake the bootleg, and he completes it low as sliding down and making the grab is Jaden Nigro. So he'll pick up about six on the ground. Pick up on five yards on the play. Second down. Well, I should say in the air, but he slid down to the ground. And it's officially a gain of five, so second down and halfway to go. Clock continues to tick as Verona's got all their timeouts. We won't see Coach Batty call any of them until they get deeper inside their territory. As here they go again with Messiano, and he's pounded down, but across midfield, enough for a first. As he picks up seven on the carry, Jason Grismala, the safety in on it. And now Verona starting to creep themselves in, moving from left to right on your screen, and the crowd behind him with the cowbells. Now three minutes left to go. So those first three plays took about 20 seconds each. Garmont outside, Lopez pursuing, he fires way too far. And the pass is incomplete, that time attempted to Chiquetto. So that'll stop with exactly three minutes left. Verona only with 48 more yards to go to find some pay dirt. So that was a smart move that time by Garmon as he drew the defense in, but his passes have been just off target, a far cry from DeMassey's 66.1 completion percentage he entered this game with. Second down and 10 from the 48 yard line of Hanover Park. And now defensive audibles being called by Coach Fulton as they send a four-man blitz, and this one's complete over to the outside. That's what they were trying to do before. And there's Gianluca Cachetto, and he'll pick up another six. It'll be third down and a long four. Third down and four. He stayed in bounds. Clock runs. 2.40 left. Garmont has stepped up big time to try to help his team down their biggest arm. He's made some big time completions and some massive runs. Let's see if he can lead the Hillbillies to a comeback as bouncing off the initial level of the defense is Maisano and he's mauled down by, by Nick Williams and Joey Filippone and now it's a huge fourth down and four to go. And this is the perfect time for Verona to call that first time out. Fourth down and four, two minutes and 13 seconds left. And if they can't get this first down, it's going to be almost, well, not almost impossible, but it's going to be very difficult for them to climb back in this one. We've got some updates. Mendham has taken down Warren, Hill, Warren Hills, Morris Hills, there we go. Well, guessed enough. So the Minutemen have taken down Morris Hills by a score of 21 to seven. Sparta has beaten Newton 28 to 12. And Somerville in their regular season finale took down South Brunswick by a score of 42 to 14. So they've got all their things set. As we've still got 133 seconds left in this contest. 14 to seven, the road side ahead. Verona, are they in the midst of a game winning drive? We'll see if they can pick up four here. Garmont from the shotgun, three receivers to his right. Spreads out over there, rolls, and did he keep a foot in bounds? He did. Did he get the first? And he also did. Chiquetto with exactly four yards and a first down. I think Coach Fulton is gonna call for a measurement as it looks from up here like he might be a little short. Right now the ball's placed at the 38 yard line. They didn't move the sticks yet. 
Yeah, why is the, they didn't move the markers yet. And now they're gonna have a timeout on the Official field and we have another team. disputed ball spot here. So we'll see exactly where they put it. So from where he danced out of bounds, it looked to me like he was a little closer to the 39 yard line. And in fact, that's where the first down, uh, like the in-between stick is currently. And they had to get it over to the 38. So now Dan Fulton gonna have a chat with the officials. And yeah, they're gonna call for a measurement on that play as the nose of the ball, well where it's placed right now, is just shy of the 38 yard line. And right now it doesn't seem like the chain gang knows what to do. So are they going to move him or not? All right, yeah, they are. They're going to say he got to the 38-yard line. So they picked up exactly four. First down, call, stand. First down, Hillbilly. On Chiquetto's fourth catch of the game. He's got 19 yards, including that first down. So Verona still have a spark. First and 10, a fresh set of downs from the Hanover Park 38. Garmont from the shotgun. He's going to run over to the left side and now fires one high and a big-time arm tackle by Grismala. And he actually knocked the ball out of his hand. So it's an incomplete pass, second down and 10. Incomplete pass, second down and 10. Try to get over to Algeri. 201 left on the clock. So the incomplete pass, I mean, if you're not going to gain any yards, the incomplete pass certainly helps Verona out here. So that'll stop the clock as, again, the tension hanging in the air at this contest. Verona on their senior day, their last game of the regular season coming up against a tough Hanover Park Hornets squad. They trail by a score. Verona have not scored since the first quarter. And Garmont actually was the receiver on that play as he fires over the middle, it's picked off! It's picked off, it's Jason Grismala as he hustles over the 40 out of bounds at Hanover Park. Have regained possession at midfield as Zach Garmont, that's played so well all game long, on the field. throws it over to Jason Grismala, who's got his fourth interception of the season as the free safety. Now, there is a flag on the field, but I don't think it's going to negate the interception. So now both teams have turned the ball just over one time. They're going to move the ball personal back as Hanover Park guilty of a personal foul. They're going to move the ball backwards, but most importantly, the Hornets are going to keep possession over at the 32-yard line. Verona's got two timeouts, though. And this Hanover Park Hornets team has been... Uh, at least in the beginning of the season, they had a case of the fumbles. They haven't done that too much in their last couple of games. As they've really cleaned things up today, they only have the one turnover off that interception. And Garmont taking a second to shake off that interception. I mean, you know, it wasn't a bad play, fired over the middle, but Grismala, an incredibly talented safety, was able to haul that one in as now Hanover Park will send their offense back, needing to kill off a minute and 51 seconds of this ball game. 14-7, Hornets lead. They've got the game in their hand, and let's see if they can seal the deal here. Last season, the Hornets only won five games. They'll, they'll try to pick up a six-win season. And just two years ago, they went on that miracle sectional run where they lost to Caldwell in that sectional final game. Outside, Parks. And he rolls ahead, picks up maybe two for Asmir Parks. It'll be second down and eight. Timeout. And that'll call a timeout over for the Hillbillies and Kevin Batty. Well, the defense did their job. They didn't allow Parks to rip off a big carry, but now they've got to stop him again, call a timeout, and then prevent the first down. But a first down and this game's over. Again, we'd like to thank all of our game broadcast partners and sponsors today. All Class Glass, Coldwell Banker, Lincoln Tech, The Office Tavern and Grill, Online Computer, Paul Miller Porsche, The Regina Center LLC, and of course, our game sponsor, Zeifman Ortho. And we'd also like to bring awareness to pancreatic cancer and all the people who are battling this disease, including our own 
longtime play-by-play announcer Brett Luthner and, of course, a close personal friend of mine. Uh, we just asked that you, know, you send prayers and good energy his way. I actually just saw Brett yesterday. He was scoring the hockey game that I broadcasted over at the Ice Vault. One of the, actually, one of the many jobs that he and I have shared since 2018. And again, just sending good energy his way. And it's good to see him out broadcasting games, score keeping games, and doing everything that he loves to do. And as always at More Sussex Sports, we're thinking of all of our family in the community, not just in our own crew, but anybody else out there in this incredible area of the great state of New Jersey. Second down and eight. Again, a first down seals the deal for Hanover Park. And Verona will end the season two and seven. Borello keeps, faked out the defense, and he's hauled down. Another shoestring tackle. That's Aiden Cifaretto. So he's able to pick up about two on that one. It'll be third and a long six. And now it's crunch time for the Verona Hillbillies. Third down, six yards to go. As the loss won't hurt Verona as much as it would have hurt Hanover Park. Because, again, Verona group one going up against a group two school. But, you know, the Hornets certainly, I mean... A 6-2 and two record might elevate them up a little bit, although, as we mentioned before, it's a very crowded group over at the top of the North Jersey Group 2 standings. Yeah, and you imagine they wouldn't be back in the top five unless Newton had a bad loss today. Although they did lose to Sparta, so that could help them out, and then it's going to depend on what Mawa does. Hanover Park pretty much had clinched a home playoff game. And now we'll see what they've got in store here. And if they can cash in and get a game ceiling first down, or Verona will get one more crack at it. Hanover Park ran two run plays. One for Parks and one for Borello. And they picked up four. It'll be third and six. And Joey Filippone is joining him in the backfield. They have to get a first down in order to kneel down as Verona are out of timeouts. They move it forward, and it's not enough for a first down for Borello. Borello's going to pick up two. Borello with the carry. It'll be fourth down, fourth down and four and yards four. to go. But the clock will continue to run. Verona cannot stop it. And I think what Hanover Park are going to do now, they're just going to wait until the play clock runs down, call a timeout, and then punt it. And then you'd imagine that Farrell would punt it out of bounds and also run around in the backfield, try to burn as much time as possible. Hanover Park will have two timeouts, getting ready to burn it now inside a minute. 14-7 lead. Verona will get the ball back, but with a limited amount of time. And the chorus of whistles echo throughout the stadium, and another timeout for Hanover Park. So they'll have 40 seconds. Timeout, Hanover Park. You imagine the ball's probably going to get somewhere, maybe the 40, the 30-yard line on Verona's end, so they're going to need a big return and more to come back in this one. And hopefully for Verona, Zach Garmon has shaken off that interception. Again, it wasn't a bad play. It's what they needed to do in that situation. Grismala just found himself in a good spot and got the job done with this Hornets defense who again has been spectacular all season long. And just to add to the drama, now we've got the rain pouring back down again. It'll be fourth down and four from the Hanover Park 39 yard line. And the timeout deliberations have dispersed, so we're good to go. Got a lot of action for you on more Celtic Sports tomorrow. We've got soccer finals. We've got volleyball finals. I'll be doing the volleyball finals, the HWS semis and finals for girls volleyball up in Hackettstown. That will start at 10 o'clock. And then the Morris County tournament finals at Madison at 530. That's already set. That will be Morristown against Morris Knowles, the one in the three seeds. Farrell punts it immediately. High line drive, bounces at the 25, keeps on going around the 20. Clock winds down as they down it 
at the 18, 19 yard line. And now with 31 seconds left, the rain has evolved from a drizzle to a light downpour. The fans who have stuck around want to see a big comeback. 31 seconds left to go and a first down and 10 for Verona. As we see some fans with umbrellas starting to near the exit, but they might want to stick around. As let's see what Garmon and company have cooked up with Coach Batty. 14 to seven, Hanover Park after scoring a 40 yard touchdown to Joey Tensawi. From the snap, Garmon. Outside, Tux takes it out, and he's brought down in the backfield. Joey Philippone. And what could be the last play of the game as it doesn't look like Verona's hustling up to the line of scrimmage. So Joey Philippone with a massive tackle for a loss. As Verona lose about 10, they're going to line up for one more play. Nine seconds left on the clock. Garmont spikes it down in a fury, and it took him forever to get that spike. I mean, they definitely could have done it at least 10 seconds earlier. So I guess they're going to run one more play here. All right, well, you know what's coming. We're going to see if they can fire one deep now. As they've got Grismala quite far back. He's already got an interception in this game. Six seconds left. Third down. Or rather, well, it says third and 10 on the scoreboard. That is not correct. It's second down at about 20. But they're going to need to travel the length of the field here. Garmont, Hanover Park, only rushing four and putting pressure on him. Hands in the air, back over towards the end zone, zigzagging around. Triple zeros on the clock. He heaves it deep over to the corner around the 50-yard line. Lepardos catches it, but out of bounds. And the Hanover Park Hornets have won their regular season finale and will end the season 6-2. and two. Verona fought valiantly, but without their starting quarterback, Connor DeMassi, in the second half due to injury, it was too deep of a hill to climb for them as they'll fall to 2-7 and seven on the season. So, again, final score, 14 for Hanover Park. And for Verona, they pick up seven. And another big thank you to everybody involved in today's broadcast. We have a great crew as usual. And we're very happy to have had them out here today despite all of the rain and all the tough conditions. It's been a pleasure to be out here bringing you all the football here today. And again, a big thank you to Seifman Ortho, who were our primary sponsor for today's contest. For our camera operator, Wyatt Fortgang, Sarah Trupp, our producer, my name is Zach Small, and remind you, as always, to stay frosty. And we'll see you next week for postseason football here on More Sussex Sports. this time on the left. Damasi scrambles, looks to his right, fires, and he keep the foot in. Yes, he did, and it's a touchdown for Verona. A quick strike offense in three minutes. Beautiful slant, Kovacs makes the man miss, keeps moving to the inside, and he's brought down just short of the goal line, but it's a first down and goal to go from right around the one. Pass complete to number 13. So Kovacs again for 10 plus yards, gets about 15. Hanover Park in the red zone. They stretch Parks out to the outside. Here's Barillo, and he's in for the score. Joey Barillo. It is his fifth rushing touchdown of the best defensive performances that we've seen out of them. Second down and short. Barillo again dancing through the linebackers, and he's across the 40 for another big first down for Hanover Park. Gain a 13 yard over towards the middle, and it's complete. Joey Tentawe, end zone, touchdown, Hanover Park. Well, they had me fooled, they had the Verona defense fooled. And for on that play, as he fires over the middle, it's picked off, it's picked off, it's Jason Grismala as he hustles over the 40 out of bounds, and Hanover Park have regained possession at midfield.